organized biology here. In this video, we're going to be going through respiratory and metabolic alkalosis. So remember with alkalosis, if you haven't watched the previous videos, I'd recommend it first. But remember with alkalosis, our blood pH has gotten too high. It's above 7.45. The reason for this is because we have too little hydrogen ions in our solution, in our blood, or we have too much bicarbonate. How does this occur? Well, we got to look at the respiratory system as well as a couple other systems that contribute to this. So first off, with the respiratory system, remember with the respiratory system, whenever we have carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide will push a reaction this way, making carbonic acid dissolves hydrogen ions into the solution. So if we have a decent amount of CO2 in here, we'll have a decent amount of acid. But here's the thing we're talking alkalosis. So what would be happening to make our blood more alkaline? Well, we're going to have to lose this CO2 in excess. And how do we do that? Well, remember in our lungs, we have these air sacs called alveoli. And at the capillaries in the lungs, there's going to be gas exchange between the air we breathe as well as the blood gases. So when CO2 is in the blood, we are going to diffuse that CO2 out. It's going to go into the alveoli. We're going to breathe out. And that CO2 is going to get out of our body through exhalation. Now, once again, alkalosis caused when we lose that CO2. So what could be happening for us to lose too much CO2? We're clearly breathing out too much. This is called hyperventilation. Hyper meaning a lot, ventilation meaning breathing. So we're breathing too rapidly. So our respiratory rate has increased. This leads to excess loss of CO2. So what could cause hyperventilation? Well, there's a few different causes. Number one, you probably have heard of this before, but it's called altitude sickness. Now, this is when your blood becomes really alkaline because you begin breathing at a rapid rate at altitude. Now, why do you think you do that? Well, at altitude, there will be less oxygen. So therefore, to compensate, you need to breathe in a lot more to get oxygen into your blood to go feed your cells to make energy. So if there's less oxygen there, you've got to increase respiratory rate, but in the process, you will lose more CO2. That causes your blood to become alkaline. All right, next one, what else could cause hyperventilation? Well, probably heard of them before, panic attacks. If you're having a panic attack, it's basically anxiety and where you can't control your respiratory rate. So you're just breathing rapidly, 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 losing that CO2 through your lungs. So what should you do if you or somebody you love is having a panic attack? You should actually tell them to breathe into a bag. Because if you breathe into a bag, what's happening is although you're losing the CO2, you're keeping it confined in a specific bag. So instead that CO2 accumulates in the bag, and therefore, when you breathe back in, that CO2 actually travels back to the blood. So if you're having a panic attack, you're hyperventilating, breathe into a bag. Wonderful. Now, last thing, asthma. Asthma is basically when your bronchi, the tubes going to the alveoli, are closing up. They're narrowing. So in order to get, once again, oxygen in, you've got to breathe in more. So breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. So therefore, by hyperventilating, Due to the asthma, we will also have that loss of CO2 by breathing out too much. Pretty simple for respiratory alkalosis, right? But now, metabolic alkalosis. Well, let's go back into that stomach first again. I told you that in your stomach, you have a lot of what's called hydrochloric acid, HCl. And when it gets into the stomach, you're going to basically dissociate that molecule into hydrogen ions and chlorine ions. If we're adding hydrogen, once again, that's an acid. Ah! Okay, so if we have a lot of acid in here, normally this acid would actually pass down into the intestinal tract, and those intestinal tract cells would actually reabsorb some of that hydrogen ions. Now here's the thing, we're alkalotic, right? So that means we have to lose hydrogen ions to become alkalotic. So what could be happening here to make us lose hydrogen ions? Well, on the flip side, what happens if this hydrogen ions, instead of going down, we go up and out? You guys have puked before, right? If you vomit, you are going to lose a lot of those hydrogen ions from losing hydrochloric acid. If you lose them, then there's less in the bloodstream, clearly, because there's less in your body in general. That could lead to metabolic alkalosis by losing hydrogen ions through vomiting. Wonderful, but not wonderful. Now, the second way you could experience metabolic alkalosis is through excess antacid intake. Antacids are usually taken if you have heartburn, so you're basically getting some of that acid up into the esophagus. So you take antacids, right, that are very rich in bicarbonate. So if you are dumping a bunch of bicarbonate into your intestinal tract, that will accumulate in the intestinal tract. And just like the good intestinal cells do, they will absorb that stuff. 
therefore drawing a lot of bicarbonate into the bloodstream. So if you take antacids chronically, you could be absorbing too much bicarb. And remember, with too much bicarb, we have alkalosis. So that's one other cause of metabolic alkalosis. Now the last one has to deal with the kidneys. I'm always harping on the kidneys. But when the kidneys are functioning properly, none of this will happen. But if we are using what's called diuretics, which are basically medications to expel more urine to decrease our blood pressure, that could be an issue. And if you have a question on blood pressure medications, recommend you watch that one here. I've gone over diuretics as well as a couple others. Now, what do diuretics do? Well, diuretics will increase urine output. And how do we make urine? Well, it's basically by taking the blood and filtering it out through the kidneys, peeing out some of the fluid, reabsorbing some of it. But in this case, we're increasing the urine output, therefore decreasing our blood volume. And if we decrease our blood volume, think about this. Think of the blood right here with a lot of water in it normally. And remember, your blood pH is slightly alkaline, somewhere around 7.4, right? So you likely have a pretty good chunk of bicarbonate ions as well in the blood. And now we're going to decrease that blood volume. And when you decrease blood volume, you're primarily losing just water. So if we're losing water from these diuretics, what will happen? Well, let's check this out. So now look at the concentration, the amount of bicarb in this space compared to water. Well, there's a lot more bicarb per water molecule, right? What will that do to our pH? It will raise our pH. So since we're basically concentrating that bicarb, we're going to increase the pH because we're losing water through diuretics. And at the same time, there's one other mechanism here. In your kidneys, you have these tubular cells lining the lumen, which is the opening of the tubule. This will eventually end up as the urine. And normally what will happen is these cells will either throw things back into the blood or throw it into the filtrate to get peed out. Well, a lot of your diuretics are what's called potassium wasting diuretics, things like furosemide and thiazides. So the way these diuretics work is basically we're going to keep water in this filtrate. And if we keep water in this filtrate, one way to help that is through excreting potassium into the filtrate as well. That will get peed out as urine. But the mechanism that brings potassium out also brings hydrogen ions out into the filtrate. So if we are using these diuretics over time, we're going to lose more water, obviously, leading to bicarb concentration in our blood. But we're also going to lose hydrogen ions, which will compound the issue because too few hydrogen ions make your blood alkalotic. So that's two ways that these diuretics could cause metabolic alkalosis. Be sure to like and subscribe if this was helpful.